Hello, my friends. This is Brother Des coming to you today in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, from the prophetic Bible teachings for Sunday, October the 15th, 2023. We have completed chapter 8 and will now begin the teaching of Daniel chapter 9. In our introduction, Daniel of Daniel chapter 9, like chapter 8, also it has 27 verses of prophetic scriptures. The chapter places Daniel in the empire of the Medes and Persians, and in the first year of the reign of King Darius, the son of Assasuerus, the Mede. And so we find in this chapter, Daniel made mention of how the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah, and he was looking through the books and found that during this 70 years of desolation of Jerusalem, as we see in, in verse 2, in reviewing Jeremiah's prophecy, apparently Daniel was motivated, and he began to seek the Lord in prayer, supplication with fasting, sackcloth, and ashes. So we are seeing here that even though uh, this man was receiving visions and all that, Daniel still felt that need for a personal connection in prayer, supplication for, with God, not only for himself, but for his people. So during this time of prayer, he petitioned God to hear, and he confessed his confession and to keep his covenant, and to have mercy on them that love him, and keep his commandments, in verse 4. And then from 5 on, we see Daniel's prayer, where he prayed for the Jewish people, and he mentioned that they sin wickedly and rebel against God, and that uh, they fail to listen to the word, even the kings and princes and the fathers, and all the people fail. He acknowledged that righteousness belonged to God. and But we find he say that we are a sinful people. Then he noted that uh, the, the confusion of kings and, and their fathers because of sin, even though they may have power, but they are confused in the world. He tells God, Lord, mercy belong to you and forgiveness belong to you. He confessed that they fail the voice of the Lord Jehovah to walk in his laws. And he said, all of Israel have transgressed the law of your, your law, Lord, and therefore your curse is poured out upon all of us. He noted that God had confirmed his word against them by bringing the evil upon them, they are in captivity, and Jerusalem was destroyed. Yet they failed to pray before the Lord, he said, and to turn from their iniquities and understand the truth. And he concludes that the Lord watches evil, and he will turn it on them who work these things, because he is a righteous God. Nobody could blame him. And he reminds Jehovah God how he brought them out of Egypt, but yet they have sinned wickedly. He petitioned God not to be angry with them because of his righteousness and to turn away his fury from the city, holy city Jerusalem and the holy mountain because of their sins and iniquities of the fathers. He also asks God to hear his servant's prayer, that's Daniel, his supplication, and allow his face to shine upon his sanctuary that's in Jerusalem, which was at that time desolate. He began to plead with God to incline his ears. He repeated again in, in verse 19, Lord, hear me, he was praying. And then while he was speaking and praying and confessing his sins to the Lord about Israel and praying on their behalf in supplication for the holy mountain. What happened? Gabriel intervened in Daniel's prayer and supplication. The man Gabriel, verse 23, 21 tells us, whom he saw in a vision, previous vision, 
at the beginning. Course, being caught, being caused. Somebody made him to fly swiftly. God tell him, go swiftly while Daniel was praying. And he touched me, Daniel said, at the evening oblation. Oh, what power we see in prayer and supplication. That God is listening. And he had an angel to fly swiftly. Can you imagine? From heaven down to the river you lie. Wow. Gabriel informed Daniel. Talk with that. Oh, Daniel. I am now come forth to give thee skill and understanding. And he was going to tell Daniel about the vision. But first, he told Daniel about what he was doing. He said, Gabriel told him when he began his supplication, the commandment came forth. And he, Gabriel, has come to show him because he is greatly beloved. Friend, can, can you take that? When you know Christ, you're greatly beloved in heaven. Therefore, understand the matter and consider the vision. Note, apparently, the vision was still about Daniel, what he saw in chapter 8, about the time of the end. He was still wondering. So Gabriel, Gabriel explained to Daniel the fate of his people and the Jews by telling him about 70 weeks, which will be determined upon the people to make transgression, to end the sin, make reconciliation for iniquity, to bring in everlasting righteousness, to seal up the vision and prophecy, to anoint the most holy. And Daniel, you must know and understand, Gabriel told him, in seven weeks, it's going to start. The commandment going to be restored, the building of Jerusalem unto the Messiah, the Prince. In 62 weeks, he said, the streets shall be built again according to the building of the wall, even in troublous times. And after 62 weeks, the Messiah will be cut off. Huh? Christ crucified. But not for himself. And the people of the prince shall come and shall destroy the city and sanctuary. The end shall be with a flood. Unto the end of war, desolations are determined. He shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. One week, friends. This is getting interesting. And in the midst of the middle of the week, could that be a week of years, seven years? He shall cause the sacrifice, the oblation to cease. He shall make the sacrifice and oblation desolate by the overspreading of the abominations. When it is consumed, that which is determined shall be poured out upon the desolate. Friends, Daniel was in the spirit, therefore he must have understood what Gabriel was explaining to him. Many people today do not understand what Gabriel said, therefore many interpretations are given of this prophecy. Nevertheless, we will share this chapter with you as we study along in our outline. Three main areas. Daniel's prayer, Gabriel's intervention, Gabriel's explanation. So the lessons from this introduction today, departing from God, we see, as Daniel presented in his prayer to God, could cause not only our families, but our nation to be in peril. God has dealt with his people as to Daniel's description in his prayer. Then we should all care as to committing sins, transgressions, and iniquities. Believers who seek God's face in an honest and supplementing or supplicating manner could have a speedily answer by a messenger of God. As what occurred with Daniel, as what occurred with Daniel and Gabriel. Swiftly he came. Well, because Jesus does judge sin, Jesus died on the cross. Remember, God has torn over all judgments unto the Son. 
So Jesus died on the cross at Calvary so that we may have the opportunity to be forgiven. It is not just a matter of coming to him, confessing that we are sinners, believing that he died, was buried, rose from the grave, and alive today, and at heaven, make an intercession and ready to save any person. It's, that's just that matter. It's just a matter of confessing and believing. So, would you come to him today? Be forgiven if you have never done so. Also, thanks for viewing. Be blessed and have a great day. If you have asked Christ to come into your life today, all the angels, see, like Gabriel and all the rest, they are rejoicing in heaven. This is what happens in heaven when a person repents and, turn to, and turns to God. Luke 15, 7 reminds us, Jesus said, I say unto you, likewise, likewise, joy shall be in heaven over, how many? A thousand? No, a million? Over one sinner that repents. More than over 99 just persons which need no repentance. Friends, take him today. Put some joy in heaven. Amen? Lord, bless your word. And even the teaching that's coming up about these 70 weeks, Lord, may people be listening for it as we explain. In Jesus' name, amen. Like I always say, in case you miss any of the teachings on chapters 1 through 7 or even 1 through 8, now we're starting 9. You can and you'll be able to to retrieve these under my name, Desmond Michael Coverley. You may follow this ministry also on YouTube, Facebook, WhatsApp, my story, Instagram, Twitter, Threads, LinkedIn, Pinterest. Then check out the website, www.cobanjay.com. Have a great day, and may God bless you and your family, your friends, and even your enemies, that they would come to know him as Lord and Savior, and one day be a friend and another person in glory. Amen? Amen.